And we're back. All right, it's been about a month since the last video drop on the 335 IS build. So where we left off, we put the RB uh, turbos, the 19T game finishers in, put about 800 miles on the car. And now keep in mind, it, it only has a stock fuel system and no tune, but I will tell you, these turbos are legitimate and the car rips. I can't wait to see how much more it pulls when it has a proper fuel system and, and a proper tune in place. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be um, looking at all these components. So uh, you can, as you can tell, I've been stockpiling a bunch of stuff here. And actually what's helped me up the most was my low pressure fuel pump. So this was back ordered for uh, right around a month and a half or so. So that kind of helped me up, but I was able to get some other things in the interim. So we're gonna get into all of these. Essentially what we're looking at is fuel system, fuel system control, and uh, B58 coils. So let's go ahead and uh, get into these individually. Real quick, before we get into the nuance of all the parts and do a deep dive on all of that, I just wanted to kind of briefly go over what I'm gonna be doing in this video, or maybe videos, depending upon how much footage I get, it may need to be two. Uh, but we're gonna take care of some maintenance items. So we're gonna do valve cover gasket, oil filter to housing gasket, walnut blast. I need to change my number four fuel injector. I'll get into more detail on that. And then I have a coolant leak. Um, I know where it's at. I'll get into that when I uh, address that. But also we're gonna be doing a fuel, uh, a full fuel system. So we're gonna be doing port injection, E85 compatible line, and a stage three, I think, yeah, stage three low pressure fuel pump upgrade. We're gonna be using the Motive Reflex Plus to control the port injection so that it's sequential port injection. Um, and then we're gonna be doing a B58 coil upgrade. All right, let's go ahead and get into the parts one by one here. All right, so let's go ahead and go over the spark. So first and foremost, we're gonna be switching to a two-step colder plug NGKs. We're gonna gap these to 0 .020. Um, then what a lot of people do on this platform is they run either a Precision Raceworks or even an Audi R8 coil. And what we've seen in the last year or two is a lot of people are really just kind of switching over to the B58 coil. Um, it's no secret that that motor is is out there putting down big power and the coils that come on that car uh, are more than up to task. So they're smart coils and they're far more advanced than what comes stock on our N54s. So I actually picked up uh, the Denon variety. So they come in this nice red. Uh, they actually come in, I, I believe, black and gray. Uh, but I went with red. That's, again, my accent color. But we're going to go with these. And the way we're going to get into work on my car is there's a company called Nexus. And they create a uh, conversion. So basically what they give you is a wiring harness to wire these. And then these will plug right into your factory M54 harness. And then you'll mount these on down the line on this bracket like such. And then you just run your, your wiring harness through and you go on down the line. Before you do that, though, you're going to swap to their boot. So you'll notice the M54 boot is longer. So you'll take this boot off, pop this one back on. And then this will allow the coil to reach into the depths of the M54 head. Now let's take a look at the fueling. So as mentioned, I'm going to be running port injection. Now I'm going with the plate style. This is the black market parts, widely considered the best plate style port injection kit for the M54. I know some people will go with a manifold style and that's cool too, but I wanted something that was a little bit more sleek, which is why I went this route. Now this particular one comes with 750 cc injectors. Uh, this is the upgraded fuel line that goes uh, to the high pressure fuel pump, gaskets, and then bracket. Now, as, as I briefly mentioned, this is my low pressure fuel pump. This is what uh, was on back order for you know, about a month and a half. And this is also from Black Market Parts. Now this contains two 450 Walbro fuel, uh, fuel pumps. Now in the back here, you'll notice um, this is a, a, a new fuel line that will run to the driver's side of the fuel, uh, the fuel tank. And this is where you're also going to put your... Um, ethanol content sensor, but this line is approved for E85 because once again, I plan on running full E85 on my car. And then we have some uh, wiring for the low pressure fuel pump. Um, God help me on this one. I'm not much of an electrician, but I think we'll be able to make it work. Now let's go ahead and get into what we'll be controlling the port injection side. This is the Motive Reflex Plus. This is what I'm gonna be using to control the port injection in my car. Now for years, um, the platform has been served very well by controllers from JB4. So JB4 has a, uh, a port injection controller that works in conjunction with their JB4. AIC makes a split second controller is what it's called. 
And again, for years, that's what people have used to control their port injection. And it's worked fine, but this is the future. This is the way uh, people are gonna be moving on the platform moving forward. And the reason is, is the other two that I mentioned are batch fire, meaning that just all six fuel injectors fire at once whenever uh, the tune in a DME and all of that calls for it. Um, you know, that's inefficient and it limits the amount of tunability. With this, it actually gives you sequential port injection, meaning that this controls each individual injector on its own. So it can pulse fuel for the amount that's needed and for the, for the time that's needed in order to make it very efficient and a lot more tunable. Uh, so inside the box, you can see we have the controller itself. Uh, you get the USB here, mini USB, and you can um, download your different files and such. And then under here we have the harness. So just like a JV4, it's gonna tap into the, the DME and um, it has everything you needed. It's very seamless. Now, this also has a connector for um, my ethanol content sensor. And you don't need an ethanol analyzer with this. Actually, it'll just, th this will be able to, to take the place of an ethanol analyzer. So it's gonna be nice. I've already got the ethanol content sensor, uh, you know, connected under my car, so I'll wire that up. Also too, there's gonna be a pressure switch that I'm running on my port injection rail that will give a signal back to this. And it'll, you know, rather than having just, you know, X amount of fuel going in, it'll basically be able to monitor the fuel rail pressure and then deliver fuel when it's needed. And that will allow everything again to, to run more smooth and, and consistent. Now, where I got all this information from, I'm kind of parroting, parroting a lot of this from, you know, what I've heard from guys on the Zero to 60 member G forum. So if you don't watch Zero to 60, it's a great channel, lots of really good BMW content, especially M54 content. Uh, but they have a member G paid forum that I'm a part of. And uh, you know, there's a lot of people with extremely high amounts of BMW knowledge and they've been really helpful for me. This is an area that I'm not really comfortable with, so they've really helped a lot. And then Ken from Wedge Performance, uh, he's gonna be the one that's tuning my car. Uh, he's basically been giving us some insight as to why this is gonna be the route most people move going forward. All right, now I'm not gonna do an install on this. I'll get it installed off camera and then I'll kind of show you the finished product when everything's wired in. But if you want a really thorough breakdown of this and then the install, go to zero to 60. I'll put a link in the description for that particular video. Okay, so we're fast forwarding uh, quite, a, quite a bit at this point. The reason is, is there's countless videos that show how to take um, you know, your charge pipe, throttle body, and intake manifold off. So I didn't want to bore anybody with footage on that. It's been done hundreds of times. Uh, so at this point, let me kind of catch you up with where I'm at. So again, all this stuff is removed. Uh, now I've also already disconnected the plastic fuel line that comes from the back of the tank from the hard line that goes into the high pressure fuel pump. And, you know, just in case you don't know, all you're going to do with this line is you just press in this black part and it allows you to pull out uh, the line from behind there. So once, once you kind of fiddle with it a little bit, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but I'm going to run my line back all the way to the tank. So we'll go ahead and get into that now. Um, once we do that, we'll be able to put on the uh, port injection plate. Now we're inside the back of the car. I have both rear seats removed and I have both of the covers off and I vacuum them off. Most cars are going to have a lot of debris in there. I vacuum them off too so that when I open up the fuel lines and the fuel tank, I don't get a bunch of debris inside. Um, I've already disconnected the fuel line here. This is on the driver's side of the tank. I got this paper towel here, but I just want to kind of illustrate how this comes off. It's not always self-evident for people, uh, but there, this, this hose basically sticks in there. You just simply push this hose in. It can be kind of rough um, because there's not a whole lot of room, but basically once you get the, the fuel line pushed in, you push the gray back a little bit, and then you should be able to just pull the black hose right out. Um, and then this snakes down underneath the car. That's where we're going to move next. All right, so we're going underneath the car. And usually there's a tray right here. If you've been under your car, you've seen this tray. Basically is where all the fuel lines and some vacuum lines, vacuum lines go, but I've already removed that. Uh, so this right here is the fuel line that I disconnected up top that goes straight to the hard line for the high pressure fuel pump. 
So this line transitions here to this plastic type. This is what I'm gonna be swapping out, actually this whole run all the way up to the T that's supplied for the port injection kit is what I'm gonna be connecting this to once I remove it. So this is, um, I already have my splash shields pulled back. And um, really these clips here, um, all you have to do is just kind of force these out with a little persuasion and they'll come out of these little body clips that are here. Maybe. Let me just do that on down the line. There's another one right here. Um, I'll get that one off camera. Um, but you can see the fuel line runs um, up into there and then is where we disconnected it from the the, uh, the top of the fuel tank. So what I'm gonna do now is just uh, off camera, I'll work the rest of this line out and then we'll start on the install the new fuel line. All right, new fuel line is ran from the tank all the way to this junction here where it meets the ethanol sensor. And then this harness here will run up to the DME box to connect to the reflex. And then this line continues up and then goes into the engine bay to connect to the T for the uh, port injection rail and then the high pressure fuel pump. Low pressure fuel pump is out. So it was uh, kind of a pain in the ass. There's not a whole lot of room back here. So I was uh, hitting my knees up against this. I had the seat all the way forward too. Uh, but nonetheless, it's out. The only uh, real trick, in my opinion, is getting off the fuel line that connects to the top of the fuel pump um, inside the tank. All you got to do is there's a green tab. You got to push it in and then pull up on the fuel line. Uh, mine was stuck. I ended up having to get a long pair of needle nose pliers, pinch it down, and then pull it up, and it was able to come off. So let's look at the comparison between the old and the new. So again, I went with the bucketed. It's two 450 wall rows. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and drop this in now. All right, so we got the new low pressure fuel pump in. Now it was a little tricky. I didn't get any footage of it because it's just so cramped back here. Um, so, but I'll just kind of talk you through how I did it. The reason it's tricky is just based on the limited amount of space that you have inside the tank. Now inside the tank, you have a fuel line, two return lines, and then a vent line. And you have to connect that all inside the tank and because you're limited for space it's just it's kind of a hassle so uh, just be prepared for that now what i did and i'm assuming most people do is you can see here on the factory pump this hat comes right off the bucket and then you can set that to the side outside the tank and then as this is in the tank it should give you enough room then to be able to maneuver things around grab your lines plug everything back in and then you can just simply set the hat back on it spring loaded and that'll compress everything inside the tank so that's the way I approached it. Now, again, recall this new low pressure fuel pump setup has two pumps. Uh, it has the primary and the secondary. The primary will feed the fuel, you know, most of the time, but then whenever the reflex calls for more fuel based on rail pressure, then this secondary pump will kick on. There's a relay that's gonna basically be what is the, is the kind of on off switch for it. So this wiring harness goes right to the top and it came with the uh, pump actually. So you can see they labeled it plus and minus. And then I just cut an X to this rubber grommet and then ran it through that way. And then that'll run back to a harness that has the relay on it and then all connected to the battery. So I'm taking a break from installing the fuel system to do some maintenance items that I've needed done on the car. Um, one of which is going to be the valve cover gasket. And then you'll notice I have the oil filter housing off as well. I'm going to be replacing the gasket on that and the oil thermostat. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show uh, very similar to how the engine looked underneath when I took the oil pan off this past winter, the top side of this engine looks clean. Now I'm no expert on this or anything, but a lot of the videos and pictures I've seen of people taking their valve cover off or their oil filter off, or excuse me, their oil pan off, um, you see a lot of discoloration and sometimes even some buildup. Um, but this particular engine, you know, 56,000 miles on it, it was obviously uh, very well maintained. Now you may notice that I have my number four fuel injector removed. So I was getting some codes earlier in the year from a misfire, I pulled the plugs and only the number four plug had a uh, high amount of soot or carbon deposit on it, which is typically indic indicative of a leaky injector. So I went ahead and found one that's refurbished an index 11, just like the ones that are on my car from injector rehab. I'm gonna go ahead and install that. Now I didn't do any DIY on removing the valve cover gasket or the oil filter housing. There are plenty of videos online to do that. I just wanted to take this moment to show that I'm in the process of doing all of these maintenance items on this build while I'm installing the fuel system. 
Another thing too, I've plugged the head ports. So I've had a few people in comments on my videos, you know, tell me, hey, don't forget to plug the head ports since I'm running the external PC, uh, yeah, the external PCV setup. So if you look in there, you'll see the set screw and I've got them all the way in. Um, if you're gonna do this particular job, just make sure you take your time. I spent about two hours doing it just so I could make sure I didn't break the tap off and I got all the metal shavings out and all of that. There are a couple of videos on YouTube that are very good at explaining that as well. I would recommend the Vader Solutions video. It was very thorough and in depth. Okay, so next up is gonna be a quick walnut blast. So as you can tell, it needs done. This isn't too terribly bad. It's not the worst I've ever seen. I've done it two times before. Both instances, the car was uh, much dirtier than this. So I'm gonna get this knocked out. Not gonna do a how-to on it. There are plenty of videos online. I encourage you to check them out. But um, now that I'm running port injection, or will be running port injection, I have my head ports blocked and an external PCV valve. I should um, not have to do this again on this car. But uh, again, more so just trying to document that I'm getting this maintenance step taken care of. There you have it, all six intake valves are clean. So now we can uh, move on to doing the fuel rail for the port injection. I've already gone ahead and installed the longer studs that come with that kit. So let's go ahead and get it prepped and start installing it. Here's a look at the port injection rail installed and uh, ready to put the manifold back on. Now you'll notice I have each of the fuel injectors plugged into the harness that will run up into the DME box and meet with the reflex. And then something I didn't mention is this pressure switch. So this is offered by Motive as well, and it's uh, one of the things that works with the reflex. So this is a 10 bar pressure switch. It's what I'm gonna get. My low pressure, uh, my auxiliary low pressure fuel pump is gonna run based on this reference. So in the past, what most people do with a port injection setup is they run a boost reference off a hob switch that plugs right into the charge pipe, and it runs back to the low pressure fuel pump and whenever a certain boost is achieved, it would start that low pressure fuel pump. Now what that results in is wild swings in fuel pressure. So in order to get it more tunable and uh, smarten it up, if you will, this pressure switch will keep a constant look at the amount of fuel pressure in the port injection rail. That will allow the tuner to have a lot more control to keep that rail pressure more steady. So this is kind of one of the things the uh, products that comes along with the Reflex that makes it such a great product. So there's three things that are sitting in front of me here that will be running into the DME box to meet up with the Reflex. We're gonna have our ethanol content sensor, which I've shown below, this 10 bar pressure switch, and then obviously the six injectors. Now I've moved on to doing the Nexus B58 coil conversion. You can see I have three coils mocked up and that's just to kind of see how everything's gonna fit together. Now. There is a factory wire loom kind of container, if you will, that sits right here where this Nexus bracket is. I've split mine in half, uh, so there's little tabs that run all the way around it. Pretty, pretty straightforward once you get it in your hands. But once you open it up, you're gonna have two wiring harnesses. So this big thick one right here is gonna have all the wires for your coils and your injectors. This front harness here is gonna to run to the front of the motor and that's gonna cover your Vanos, crank and cam position sensors. Now, what I've already done is I've already brought those two together. I've put a nice piece of wire in them. You can see it tucked in between the, the vacuum solenoids here. And then I've got that all looking nice. Now it's really just time to tackle this. Where you see the piggy tails, which comes with a Nexus kit, this is what plugs into the factory coil um, harness runs underneath, comes through this little hole, and then plugs into the B58 coil pack. Where these are at is where they're gonna reside because there's not enough room for them to fit underneath the, um, this plate in between that and the valve cover. So now what I need to do is make all this look good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do them one at a time. And one thing that I've encountered is uh, the, the grounds for two, uh, one and two, three and four, and five and six go to this post, this post, and this post. So this post grounds these two, this middle post grounds these two, and then this middle post right here grounds these two. These were too short to reach while keeping everything here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lengthen these, run it underneath, and then attach my grounds. Once I get that done, I'll then kind of fold all these wires up, get them into a loom, and make them look a lot better than what they look like now. Now once I get back to that, I'll come back on and show the finished product. 
Okay, so we're gonna fast forward a little bit. So being honest here, I'm trying to get this car on the road. We're into the summer months now and I really do wanna get some time in these turbos this year. I wanna get uh, the flash from Ken in, some revisions in. So I am kind of scurrying a little bit to get all these modifications and the maintenance items taken care of. Uh, so I am kind of being short with the amount of filming that I'm doing. Where I left off in the last clip was me installing or beginning the install on this Nexus B58 coil conversion. You know, one thing I would add is, and you can see how I have the wires all kind of batched up. It does get very tight in the back. It is very tricky to get all that done. Really the only solution in my opinion to be able to put this in super clean where you can fit the beauty cover on is to shorten and or repin some of these wires that run both to the coils, to the ground, and then to the injectors. But this sort of method here, you'll have to play with it. It'll work for what I'm trying to do right now, which is again, get the car running on the road tuned and dialed in. Now, leading to the DME box, speaking of that, you can see this cluster here, and I will clean this up a little bit. I have my Motive Reflex Plus. It's down in that cavity there. It's all wired in. You can see my wire taps. I have CAN bus integration tapped in, uh, the, the flex fuel wire, all of it. So it's ready to go. My two cables that run both to my ethanol content sensor and to my pressure switch on the port injection rail. Now, on this side, the cold side, I have everything put back together. It's all torqued up and we're ready to go. And really the only thing left to do at this point is get my oil in, get my coolant in, and then upload the, the Motive Reflex Plus files with a laptop. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some of that stuff done next and we'll come back on camera once we have that done. Speaking of engine oil, I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about the oil I've used in my BMWs ever since I started driving them, and that's this Liquid Molly 5W40. It's a fully synthetic, and it served my car as well. But now that I'm doubling the output of my N54, it's time to move on to something that's going to offer much better protection. So moving forward, I'll be using this Motul 300V4T, which is also a 5W40, fully synthetic. Uh, this is a race oil. And the difference between the two is that this is rated to about 70,000 PSI, whereas the Motul is rated to 113,000 PSI. So this is going to offer far greater protection on my M54. Once again, this is what I'll be using moving forward. All right, so we are ready. We're ready to get this car out on the road and get a couple of pulls in. So just real quick, we have the oil in, coolant in, and bled. Uh, was able to fix my coolant leak that I had, thank God. Also, I have my new number four injector that I swapped out. I have that coated in, so we're good there. So as you can see, everything is back together now. I have all of my files loaded to the mode of reflex along with my custom port injection file from Ken. And I also have my base map from Ken uploaded in the MHD+. Plus. So we are ready to go uh, do a couple pulls, like I said, hopefully get some good logs so that we can send that off to Ken and get the next revision of the tune. Before we get this car started, I just wanted to cover one more thing. I didn't spend a whole lot of time filming this, uh, but with the low pressure fuel pump, there are two 450 Walbros. Uh, the one is the main low pressure fuel pump and then the other is obviously an auxiliary, like I had mentioned. The auxiliary is gonna be triggered by this solid state relay. So it's a Haltech unit. Like I said, I didn't spend a whole lot of time filming it, but essentially what happens is once the rail pressure drops below a certain point, the reflex will then kick this relay on and then send uh, more fuel to the system via that auxiliary 450 wall row. All right, so like I said, we're ready to go ahead and get this thing on the road. Let's get it started. spot try to get a third gear log 
and see how this thing does. Got to get oil temps and all that up before we do. Check back in when we get there. gear log from 2,000 to 7,000 RPMs. <laughs> so definitely uh, some lag down below, but we're starting off in third gear at 2,000 RPMs. Uh, but once the turbos kick in, I mean, that was only 19.6 PSI. Um, according to MHD, but uh, still pulled pr pretty strong. Hopefully I got a good log there. Okay, so it's the next morning. Um, was able to get the log uploaded to DataZap and then emailed over to Ken to have him take a look at it and hopefully get a revision. Now, I'm no subject matter expert on logs or any of that stuff but the limited knowledge i do have looked uh like like it was fine uh, but we'll go from there i appreciate everybody um being patient as far as how long it takes me to upload uh it's just you know a lot of work that i do to this car and i'm very anal retentive about things so i tend to spend a lot of time making sure i do things correctly uh, that doesn't lend itself well to you know, being a person who uploads very frequently. But nonetheless, now that I got the car on the road, I have it hopefully where I want it. When I get the next revision of the tune, I'll get it back out. I'll film some more content on those pulls and getting those logs done and uh, just have some fun with the car. All right, everybody, till next time. Thanks.